Hi, guys. Uh, thank you for joining me again today, both of you. I really appreciate it. And it's so weird because I went live on on YouTube uh, last night. I went live on Facebook this morning with a sermon. But while I was in church, um, the pastor was talking about moving and being in motion and and uh, he was talking from the book of Acts when they were praying for Paul to get into jail, but then Paul was already at the door. Um, and the Lord said, um, it kind of reminded me of uh, motion sensors. When, we're, when, when we are in motion, things happen. I talked. Um, briefly this morning on Facebook about imagining and that's all still true but imagining doesn't always mean waiting for God to do whatever um, imagining could mean um, God is waiting for you to step forward you're not waiting on God he's waiting on you and God gave me an image of those doors in, they're in some department stores, they're at my doctor's office, where you step up to the door and then the door opens. Um, but you have to take the first step um, in your imagining, in your emotions, to, to for the thing to happen. So when God senses you are moving mo most times, sometimes he'll do it miraculously, depending on what he has put But when God senses you're moving, your motion, he will open the door. But if you just stand there, it won't open. And sometimes when you're I had the experience where you come up to the door and it doesn't open. Either there's a malfunction, either something happened, and you have to move some stuff out of the way. God is saying, at this moment in time, some of you have got to move some stuff out of the way. Not just like keep knocking, um, like the pastor said, which is so true. You have to keep knocking, but there, there are things in your way. There are mindsets in your way. There are attitudes in the way that are preventing the door from opening. So what attitudes and what mindsets are in the way are preventing your door from opening and your imaginations from coming to pass. Um, sometimes it's something that God is doing in your life, but most times it's a mindset that you have or an attitude that you have that is blocking the way. So sometimes it's not just about keep knocking. Yes, keep knocking, keep praying, keep doing what you're doing, keep big in motion, because when he says it's your motion, that's when he opens the door. But what is in your way that's preventing the door from opening? Is it something that uh, demonically that the, that the uh, Satan is trying to put in your way? Oftentimes we like to blame the devil, but oftentimes it's something that we're putting in our own way. So, so what is that for you? Is that an attitude? Is that a mindset? Because yes, God wants to give you every, everything that he desires for you and your purpose and all that you're imagining, write that down. Yes. Um, but what is in your way? What mindset is blocking you from 
having those doors open. Sometimes it's not about knocking, and sometimes it is. Sometimes he's like, you're knocking, you're asking, but there's something in your way that you are refusing to deal with, so that if you, if you, but if you were to deal with that thing that you're afraid of, that you're terrified of, the doors will open. If you were to deal with that horror of that thing that happened in your life, the doors will open. So, so, the Lord is asking, what are you not dealing with that is preventing the doors from opening? Sometimes it's not about knocking. Sometimes there is something in your way that is standing in your way that you're yelling and you're screaming, Lord, I want this door to open. I want to be healed. I want to do this. And he's like, but you have this attitude problem. You have this anger issue. You have this issue of molestation. You have this issue of divorce. You have this issue of unforgiveness that you're dealing with, you have, you have issues that are blocking this door from opening, and I cannot open the door until you deal with that issue, because if I do, it will destroy you. So you need to deal with that issue before the door can open, and then after you deal with that issue, then, the, then you will knock and the door will be open. But you can't open the door with a huge... The sense can't work with a huge box in your way, even if you do forward into your destiny. The center is blocked. So sometimes in your life, the center blocked and then God said you need to deal with you before I can open this door because if I open this door without you dealing with yourself or with that unforgiveness or with that issue it will kill you and it will crush you and it will explode everything around you and I don't want that when this door opens I want freedom to reign. I want freedom to expand your life. I w he said, I will not give you anything that will kill you. He said, I refuse to give you uh, something that will kill you. So you need to deal with those issues. You want a husband, so you're going to different churches, or you're um, putting yourself out there on these Christian dating sites, but he's saying you're not dealing with the, that uh, tragic loss of your ex and how that made you feel. You're just hoping, you're burying it, hoping it will go away. Issues don't go away. They need to be dealt with. You can't pray issues away. You can't pray this, um, this, whatever this issue is away. You need to deal with yourself. You need to get down and dirty with the Lord and deal with yourself. If it takes counseling, if it takes a doctor, whatever it takes, your freedom is worth it. Honey, you are worth it. You are worth it, and you are worth restoration, and you are worth everything that the Lord has to give you. He's saying, but, but you're, you're knocking, you're knocking and asking for the door to be open, but there's a box standing in the way of the door sensor. So it can open with a big box in the way. You need to move, open you don't need to just move the box out of the way and bury it. You need to open the box, dig through it, go there, go in, go where it's painful, go where you're angry, go where you're frustrated, and then you will be healed. And then the door will be open, and then when you knock, it will be open. Because 
he says, if I open the door for you now, it will kill you. And I refuse to give you anything that will kill you. I, I just wanted to say that. It's not about just knocking and the door will open. Yes, that's true. But it's also about before you knock, deal with those issues that are blocking the door from being open. Sometimes it's an issue that you cause. Sometimes it's an issue that you have to talk to another person and work out that disagreement and work out that area of contention in your family with your daughter, with your sister, with every, with those around you. And then when you knock the door when we open. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. We bless you. We love you. And thank you for t talking to us about mo motion centers and not just sitting around, but but while we're stepping, while we're waiting, we're working. And when we step, you open the door and just um, teaching us about blocks and working through issues and to go where we're scared and go where we're lonely. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In the name of Jesus, amen. He's like, Go where you're scared, go where you're lonely, go where you're afraid, go there, go right there. Whether you need a doctor's help, a medical doctor's help, a therapist's help, a pastor's help, people are available to help you. You just have to ask. And then the door will be open. And sometimes even with your issues, he will still open the door if he sees progress. If you're, if you're burying something and not dealing with it, he's not going to open the door that will kill you. But if he sees progress and you're not, you're not healed yet, but you're working on yourself, he will open the door. But if he sees no progress and you're just waiting or burying it, um, he's saying, I will not open the door to something that will kill you. And it's for your own good, because if I, if I do open this door, it will destroy you. And he's like, I will not have anything to destroy my child. Like that daddy bear thing I was t saying last night. Thank you, Lord. So while you're ima imagining, ma ma while you're imagining what what God's purpose is for your life, while you're writing it down, go up to the door. It will open, but only if you deal with what's in the box that's blocking it. And it might take years, but the Lord's saying, your freedom, you, you sister, you brother, you're worth it. You're worth it. Whoever told you you weren't worth it, that's a lie from hell. And by the authority of the Holy Spirit, I send it back in Jesus' name. You are worth time. You are worth love. You are worth forgiveness. You are worth peace. And you're worth everything that God's word said you're worth. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us today. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your love. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys. See you later. Not today, but next week. 
I'll say goodbye to Facebook first, and then I'll say goodbye to YouTube. And the Lord wants me to tell you, too, he's building something. He's building something. I don't know what this word is for, but he's building something right now. He's building something right now. Receive what he's building. Don't fight what he's building. He's building something in you. He's building something around you. All this stuff, all the reason he won't answer, all the reason whatever is because, all the reason for the blocks is all the building reason you have to work through your issues is he's building something in you and he's building something around you. Let him build. Let him build. Let him build. Let him build. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. Let him build. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for building your church. Thank you for building in us. Thank you for building around us. Thank you for building the, the people that we um, come in contact with. Are you building people with your words and with your life? Are you destroying them with your words and with your life? Build them. Build them, church. Build people. Everywhere you go, build people. You can build people with words. You can build people with actions. You can build people with your time. Build people. Don't destroy them. Don't destroy them with your words, even innocent words. Build them. Build them. Build them. Make sure you're building people. And he's saying, Build his church. You build his church. And the, and the church is the people. And not even just salvation. That's another level. But just build people in general. A smile can build a person. A kind word can build a person. And a positive experience can build a person. And the opposite is true for negative experiences. Uh, negative things that go on in people's lives. Remember to build people. Never tear down people. Always build people. Because you never know what that person can be in your life. And don't be afraid to build trust, don't be afraid to build love, and all that stuff takes time. You don't build a house overnight. You do it brick by brick and step by step. Everything you're imagining can be built, but you have to take it one step at a time. Keep knocking, never give up, but while you're knocking, Deal with the thing that is blocking you. Deal with that unforgiveness. Deal with that pain. Go right there and deal with it. You're strong enough to do that. And thank you, Lord, for teaching us today. Thank you, Lord, for being with us today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Build your church. Build your church, build it from the ground up, it's your church, build your church, build your church, build it from the ground up, we're your church. Upon this rock. You build your church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. When we bind and loose, we proclaim your truth, and in Jesus' name we 
And sometimes your imagining includes building people. You think your imagining and what you're writing down and what the Lord is showing you is just for yourself? No, it includes building people. It's not about building your business. The business is the shell that God is using to build people. To build people's financial knowledge. To build people's knowledge of children if you're a teacher. To build whatever God has put in your life. Everything that God has put in your life is to build something. And that motion sensor is to actually build something. So that issue that I told you you have to work through, it's because it's to build people. It's to build people. You want to want to help divorce people? Well, you'll have to deal with your own divorce issues um, bef before you can help other people. And the reason why you have to do it is that you can show other women, other men, how to, how to come up with divorce on not unscathed, but learning the lessons that you need to, that they need to, because you did it. The greatest testimony for other people is to see, I did it so you can too. Although everybody's process is different, when, when, somebody, when somebody sees another person who's gone through the same situation, it gives them hope, it gives them strength to know that if, if she can do it, if he can do it, I can do it too. So, bye guys. I'm really signing off now. <laughs> See you later. Oh, I'm signing off of Facebook first. Your church, build your church, build it from the ground up. It's your church, build your church, build your church, build it from the ground up. We are your church.